You're listening to a podcast appearing on the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. This is the Weekly Firecast, Episode 23, a live report from ZestFest 2013 with Firehead Thomas Gately. And I also talked to Chef Steve Lawrence from K. John's Fiery Foods. Strap yourselves in. It's time for the Weekly Firecast. This is the podcast for all foodies, those who love food that is cooked over a fire or feels like fire in your mouth. If you love spice, smoke, sauce, and all things savory, this is the show for you. And now, here's your host, chili head and barbecuer, Scott Roberts. Welcome, everybody, to the latest installment of the Weekly Firecast. Here we are towards the end of January, and where I'm recording this from, you know, I live in the St. Louis, Missouri metro area, we're experiencing some of our usual flip-flop, crazy, weird, unpredictable weather. You know, sometimes it could be bitter cold, but then a couple days later, you wait and it warms up and it's about 70 degrees. Well, that's kind of what it's been like today. It got up to 75 degrees, had some pretty bad thunderstorms and actually some tornado warnings. Then here in a couple days, it's supposed to get down into the teens, crazy weather but anyway i'm getting way off topic here you're here to listen to a fiery foods podcast aren't you well anyway this is the weekly firecast the only podcast on the web right now that has a focus on hot sauce chili peppers barbecue buffalo wings all things spicy all things savory and i'm proud to be with you each and every week presenting this to you the chili heads and the barbecuers out there Now, the Weekly Firecast is a proud part of the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network, which is a very strong network of podcasts. Uh, Duh. (laughs) But there's some very big shows on the network within the stable. And I'm also the co-host of another couple of podcasts on the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. One is the Dexter Podcast, which, as the name implies, focuses on the Showtime show Dexter. That's currently on hiatus right now. There's a brand new show that I'm co-hosting with my cohort, Mike Wilkerson, called The Following Podcast from TwoGuysTalking.com. Now, this show reviews the hit Fox show, The Following, that stars Kevin Bacon. And every week, we review the latest episode, go over the major plot points, tell you the positives, the negatives, whatever we feel about the show. So if you are a fan of The Following, you can follow us along simply by going over to thefollowingpodcast.com. Or if you want to look at all the shows currently on the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network, including the Firecast, the main site, The Mothership, is located at the numeral 2, guystalking.com. Go over there today. And what else is going on? Well, the Super Bowl is coming up in just a few days. You know, the teams that I was hoping would win, well, the ones that I kind of found favorable, they have lost early in the playoffs. So I have no dogs in this fight right now. It's the San Francisco 49ers against the Baltimore Ravens, two teams I really don't care for too much. But I do love football action, and I love Buffalo Wings. It's a big part of a lot of people's Super Bowl celebration, including mine. So if you're into hot wings, chicken wings... I want to try some great new sauces, not just for the Super Bowl. It's probably too late by the time you're listening to this episode. But any time in the future, I have recently chatted with a couple of great new buffalo wing manufacturers. One is Blackwood's Wing Sauce. I talked to founder Lynn Kozarski back in episode 19, and he makes four different wing products. A mild garlic parmesan, which is, oh my god, it's so good tasting. Original, medium flavored a hot version, and a pretty good barbecue wing sauce. And then two episodes ago, I spoke to John Rosati of Rippin' Red Sauces. And he has a pair of wing sauces, both original and hot, which are delicious and creamy. So if you want to hear those conversations, simply go to weeklyfirecast.com to jump back a couple episodes, take a listen to those. Also recently in a spicy world, ZestFest, which takes place down in Irving, Texas. Well, that was held this past weekend. Unfortunately, I was unable to attend, but I had the next best thing. I had Chilihead reviewer Firehead Thomas Gately. So he represented my blog, scottrobertsweb.com. He did a series of videos for ilovitspicy.com and scottrobertsweb.com. 
So if you want to see them, go to iloveitspicy.com. I'll just go ahead and put the link in the show notes. But anyway, on the third day of the show, I called them up via Skype, had a conversation with Firehead Thomas to ask him what he thought of the show overall, what he thought about the Fiery Food Challenge Banquet Awards Dinner that was held the very first night of Zest Fest. Plus, he told me a few of the really standout products that he encountered during Zest Fest. Well, anyway, that interview, that phone call in its entirety, you can listen to in just a few minutes right here in this episode. And then later in this episode, I speak to Chef Steve Lawrence of K. John's Fiery Foods. Now, you could hear my interview with K. John Hard of K. John's Fiery Foods, the head honcho, the founder, the big enchilada. Well, I interviewed K. John all the way back in episode number one of the Weekly Firecast. But K. John and his crew were down at Zestfest this past weekend. And while that was going on, Steve was up at K. John's headquarters in the Columbus, Ohio area. Now, Steve is someone who really helps the day-to-day uh, activities and the responsibilities at K. John's Fiery Foods. And he has collaborated with K. John on a number of products. So I kind of wanted to get behind the scenes and see what his collaborative process was with K. John. Now, everyone knows K. John is a flavored genius. He has come up with so many great products, of the hot sauces, barbecue sauces, salsas, so many products in the K. John's product lineup. I know currently they have over 150 different products. I mean, it is just extensive. But Chef Steve, as he mentions in the interview, he's been with K. John's Fiery Foods for over seven years. So a lot of the new products that have come out from that company, he's had a big hand in helping out with. So anyway, I don't want to give away any more spoilage. Just go ahead and listen to that later in this episode. And then one important thing I wanted to bring up, um, as you listen to the interviews with Firehead Thomas Gately from Zestfest, and even with my talk with Chef Steve Lawrence of K-Johns, several Fiery Foods events are mentioned and just in case you're not really familiar with all these hot sauce shows and food festivals, I invite you to get up to speed at my calendar page on my website. I have a full Chili Head events calendar over at scottrobertsweb.com. Just simply go there, click on the calendars link, and all the major events in the year 2013 will be listed there. So when you hear mentions of uh, Peppers of the Beach or Zest Fest Midwest, you will know what we're talking about. But again, you can go to scottrobertsweb.com or just click the link in the show notes. I'll provide everything there. And just a few more little housekeeping tidbits I wanted to mention. I recently put up a blog post for the Ultimate Hot Sauce Showdown. Now, the origins of this is that uh, sometime last year, the Huffington Post, they did their own little death match with you know sauces where people could vote on them bracket style. And of course, they only had the major mass market brands, Tabasco, Frank's, Sriracha, Crystal, Cholula. And I understand, you, you want to have something where everybody's tasted these sauces. But on the other hand, I thought it was a huge injustice that many, many great brands, uh, many great hot sauces were completely ignored. Ones that are 10 times better than, you know, a watered-down vinegary sauce like Tabasco is. So with the little nudging of my friend Adam Furr of Endorphin Farms, they are a co-packer based in Florida, he kind of gave me the push to you know, eventually do this. So what I am doing is asking all of you to nominate what you think are the best hot sauces available today. And whatever are your favorites, simply go to scottrobertsweb.com, look for the blog post titled Ultimate Hot Sauce Showdown. Again, this, just like all the other links I mentioned in the weekly Firecast, I'll put in the show notes. And just go to the comments section of that post, and you can name one, three, five, whatever, of your favorite hot sauces. So I will take the top 64 vote-getters based on everyone's suggestions, their nominations in the comments section, and I will put them up bracket style, like a March Madness. And I will have one-on-one bouts between different hot sauces, and it'll get whittled down to 16, and 8, and 4, and finally 2 for the big championship. So if this sounds fun to you, Run over to my website at scottrobertsweb.com and give your suggestions. Tell me what you want nominated. And, th- and this is a great opportunity 
if you have a little known hot sauce that you want the world to know about and even if you're a hot sauce maker yourself and you want to give a little exposure to it that you want to possibly put it in the running to go head to head with some of these other hot sauces i welcome all of you to go do that and then the last bit of housekeeping i put out a weekly email newsletter and what's included in that is just simply uh, three or four of the major highlights that have come from my blog, scottrobertsweb.com. You know, I understand sometimes you're busy. You may not always catch what goes on at my website. So I just kind of put those posts in a convenient email form. I mail it out every Monday. So if you want to sign up for the newsletter, just simply go to scottrobertsweb.com and then click on the newsletter link at the very top. All I need is your first and last name, your email address. That's it. I don't want any more personal information from you. Just enough to be able to get that to your inbox every Monday morning. And nope, I don't sell your information. I don't give it away to any third party, so you don't have to worry about any of that crap. So so be sure to go over and do that today. Anyway, that's my little intro today. It's enough chit-chatting. Uh, there will not be a review of the week because I have the dual interviews coming up. So let me go straight away with my talk with Chilihead reviewer, Firehead Thomas Gately, live from Zest Fest 2013. And now, the Fire Talkers interview. Hey, good afternoon, Tom. How's everything going? Going pretty good. Uh, let me just say, we're talking live with Chilihead reviewer, Firehead Thomas Gately. How's everything going down there? Oh, I'm having a fantastic time. I, I really hate to see it come to an end, but, you know, all, all good things must. Yeah, well, it's always a pleasure going to shows like this. Uh, well, let's start at the beginning. Uh, when did you come in Friday night? I came in Friday, um, of course, hitting traffic. I'm coming up from Temple, which is just north of Austin. Uh, I came up through Fort Worth and over the construction, of course, uh, caused a lot of traffic. And I didn't get into town until, oh, I would say about 5.15 or so. And uh, Adam Fair with uh, Endorphin Farms was texting me and asking me when I was going to get here, and he was ready to hook up and go up to the uh, awards banquet dinner. So he was anxiously awaiting when, when I finally got here, and that's exactly what, what happened. Oh, very cool. Uh, so you were able to attend the awards banquet. How did that go? It was really fun. Uh, I was actually very pleasantly surprised at, at what a nice event that is. They had a lot of bands, and uh, I thought the food was pretty good. It had uh, good thin crust pizzas just that never seemed to end. They just kept on bringing them out, and, and uh, <laughs> yeah. good uh, taco and fajita fixings, and it was great for my from uh, my taste. I loved it. Oh yeah, did anybody actually bring any hot sauces in this time to go you know, with the food? It, you know, it's funny because uh, <laughs> I, I thought that their whole table would have something uh, from their, either their own line or somebody else's line, but I was the only one that happened to have any, anything with me um, from our table and from what I could see from any table. Uh, I happened to have some of the Heartbreaking Dawn's Yellow Seven Pot Powder, which I always Ooh, carry with nice. me. And uh, a little bit of um, Three City Sauce Works, the Deadwood Taco Sauce. I, I love that stuff. That that would be perfect on that. Yeah, yeah, everybody did, and we and I just basically passed it around to everyone to try it. So that was really uh, the only passing of the sauce I, that I saw. Interesting. A couple of years ago, um, it was who was it? oh Torchbearer sauces. They brought in a big cardboard box with all their sauces, and we we're passing them around. It's like, well, thank God somebody remembered these. I didn't even remember myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking that maybe um, that, that they should set up a hot sauce bar. You know, everybody just bring a bottle up from downstairs and set them all over there. And then, uh, you know, and that's, that's a good way for everybody to taste each other's sauce. And there you, there you have it. You don't have to worry about it. It's, it's all sitting right there for you. It would have been a really good idea. Very true, because a lot of them, they're stuck at their booths all day, and they don't get a chance to really walk around and try everybody's products, so... That would be a great idea. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. I think the powers of be should be listening to this right now and writing down notes for next year. Well, hopefully they are because you know everybody listens to the weekly firecast. Oh, they should, yes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, as far as the awards went, any big surprises for you? You know, I put the list up there. I didn't really look one by one and keep track of, oh, this manufacturer won this many awards. Anything surprise you? Surprise! Um, actually, there were there were more non-surprises. I think um, I think that was kind of the general consensus. You have your you know your Pepper Palace. They enter a lot of products and spend a lot of money um, getting in there. And you've heard their names quite a bit. Garden Fresh Salsa, kind of the same thing. But there were some new people. Uh, the uh, Hound Comics guys, uh, Brimstone and, and Bumble. 
Bumblefoot? Bumblefoot, couldn't think of his name. Um, yeah, from Guns N' Roses. They uh, they cleaned up. They Their company got like seven awards, and it's their first time out, so that was pretty cool. Tim Bader winning um, Best Hot Sauce was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, with his uh, lava chocolate lightning sauce. Yeah, yeah good sauce. Yeah, very good. And this good stuff. I tried it today, actually. Um, and then the fact that uh, Def Con is back. Of course, we've, we've all known the story about how their sauce went to the wayside for a while there. And, and um, But he's he's back. He's with Endorphin Farms now. And, and I would say that Adam certainly brought it back to what it should be. Yeah, the good creaminess that we all know and love. Yes, yes. I, I missed it so. <laughs> I stocked up on some while I was here, so it's all good. Well, that's good. I need to do that soon because I, I think I actually still had a little bit of the runny stuff. I do too, and I don't know what For to do a with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hate to throw any sauce out, but uh, I'm not sure. Exactly, yeah. I'm not sure what to do with it, but the, the creamy stuff is back. There's no point in, in uh, even messing with the stuff. Exactly. So uh, Saturday, your, your first day of the show. I know you've been doing all kinds of things, videos, uh, taking pictures for Buddha and I love it, spicy.com. What kind of things have you been doing specifically? Have you been interviewing people, talking to people? Yeah, I tried to go around and um, you know get a good, good amount of pictures of the booths and just the general scene before it started getting too crowded. Uh, and then I picked and choose people that I hadn't really heard of before. Um, or maybe uh, Adam or somebody else might have said, you know, these people are really nice. They have a good product. Come over and meet them, and then I would do a little interview with them. And um, So I, I, all the interviews I did are with people that we don't see all the time uh, in the Chili Head community. So um, I hope I did a good job of that. I've got, I've got another one coming up, uh interview coming up with Bumblefoot, him and Kay John talking about uh, their collaboration. And then there's a few other people like um, Big Papa, Big Papa Sauces, Lady Bird Sauces, um, Reva, Reva Foods, and some some different things that I had not not really heard of before. Trying to get some exposure to some people that maybe haven't had it before. Oh yeah, so that was my main goal. With, yeah, that was my main goal with um, with the whole coverage sort of part of it because you know we all we've all heard from the big dogs. We hear hear from them all the time. So uh, I wanted to I wanted to see what was new out there and, and and who some of the new faces were. Good idea, good idea. And of course, those videos are going to be available within the next couple of weeks on iloveitspicy.com. dot com. And for everybody listening, I will put the link in the show notes. Was well, speaking of those new people, have any new products or new companies uh, floored you? Yeah, um, well, two that really stood out for me, probably my favorite of the whole show, was called uh, One Screw Loose. And they're a jams and jellies company, believe it or not. And I don't, they had a lot of jams in the show, more than I've ever seen. And so it's, you can't really, it's hard to go around all day and taste jams and jellies. But mm-hmm. these, these folks were just stood out. Their labeling, their packaging uh, was, is really cool. And they make their jams and jellies out of alcoholic beverages. They make beer jellies and bourbon jellies and wine jellies. And they're just, every one of them is phenomenal. Just super tasty. Nice. Um, so I actually had to, I actually bought, I actually got one of every of their flavors. And they have quite a few. They're doing Shiraz, a Shiraz gel, hmm. uh, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, they won, a, they won an award for their orange apparition, which is a, an orange ghost pepper jelly. They have another one that would really appeal to the Chili Head crew. It's called Bruja Habanero <laughs> Jelly Rub. And, and I would say if you if you like jellies in any sort of way, uh, whether it's putting it over cream cheese or just on, slapping it on peanut butter, check them out at uh, onescrewloose.com. They're, they're an up-and-coming company. I hope they do well. Yeah, I'm a big fan of jellies. I think it was just I, I, yeah. last podcast episode I reviewed Kelly's jellies, and I said it's maybe the most underrated little sub segment in fiery foods. People don't think of pepper jellies. Yeah, they're so versatile. I mean, you can you can make rib sauces with them, coat ribs, and any really any kind. You could turn any jelly into a barbecue sauce. Oh yeah, yeah, it works fabulous like that. Sure. It's nice and sticky, glaze yeah. up. Well, who else knew that? Uh, kind of made note of. There's a company called Lusty Monk. Mustard. Ah, have you heard of them? I remember them. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I had never seen them before, um, but they have. I bought a couple of theirs. They have. Um, they have one that's hot. It's. Uh, and I don't have the bottle in front of me. I can't remember what it's called. But, and they had one that was like a honey mustard. It's a stone ground style mustard. And I just thought that those two products were very very good uh, enough for me to write it down and know I wanted to come back today and buy it. Yeah, they have some good stuff. Um, so that was one. 
there's a the guy named Eddie Dean his, uh, has been smoking brisket over here and selling his brisket sandwiches, and his barbecue sauce is, is really good. Well, it's about time somebody sells some food. <laughs> yeah, well, they had, they had somebody who was uh, so, doing tamales, too. So, And then they have a whole concession stand, you know, that's run by the convention center. Yeah, of course you As see well, those, so. and it's like overpriced stuff, and it, it, the food is so-so. Oh, yeah. But I think if there's one thing about these big, fiery food shows is they should sell food barbecue, ribs, wings, whatever. They could make some serious cash off of it. Yeah, they really could. And they, w- when I came to this show, I was you know, really trying to focus on other things other than hot sauce to bring home, like salsas and maybe some ketchups if I could find them, different things like that. And I did want to point out that I found a really nice habanero ketchup, K.A. Ranch. And I think they're, they actually won quite a few awards. Golden Chili you awards. say K.A. Ranch? Yeah, K A Ranch, K A Dash Ranch. Okay. And uh, you'll you'll probably see them on the list, but I don't think they won for the habanero ketchup. That was I, I tasted their whole line, and that was uh, well, the one thing that stuck out for me, and that was the one bought from them. So I, I love bringing uh, like a habanero ketchup or a jalapeno ketchup to restaurants and and dipping them in the fries with onion rings or whatever. It's just it makes it so much better. It does. I, I'm a big dipper myself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That, that was you know they say that. Uh, Ketchup, it's a lot tougher to to master because at some point, if you go too far, you've got a barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a you have to find that happy medium where it's still a ketchup and you and you can still but you can still have interesting flavors um, that make it unique. Yeah. Um, and also, a big shout out to Dino's, our good buddy Dino's Jalapenos, oh, best overall product. Phenomenal. Gotta love Dino. Yeah. Now, I don't think I've had the the bacon cheddar bits. How did those taste to you? I went over to his booth to try those. Uh, in fact, after you had mentioned it to me, and they were gone. He didn't have. He didn't even have any samples left of it. Oh no! Yeah. So I went to him. We're gonna have to wait. And he said, <laughs> he said he'll make sure he gets us some at some point. But he's he's selling the um, chips and and more of a um, ground topping type style now in That's a jar. And he mix. He has one that he's mixed with the habanero chips. So I thought that was pretty cool. I picked up a couple of jars of that. Oh yeah, with the, the blend, the, almost the trail mix type stuff. That's pretty good. Did he have any of the uh, the seven pot ones available? No, he sure <laughs> didn't. And you know what? I called. I caught him today. I saw him Friday night at the awards, and I never saw him again until today. Uh, so he may have had some Friday or Saturday, but uh, I missed it. You can't get it. Catch everybody with everything all the time. Oh, yeah. And, of course, it's busy. It's huge there. What have the crowds been like? Um, actually, I think they're, uh, the vendors are a little disappointed. Yesterday was started off slow. It picked up at the end, uh, but just from word of mouth, I, I'm hearing that they thought it would, would be better this year. They, apparently, last year was better uh, crowd-wise. Anything weather-wise? Anything else going on town that might be slowing it down? No, it's cloudy. It's kind of foggy, but um, no, I can't. I don't know uh, what the deal was. But you'll have to get the numbers from Judy, but uh, it may not be different at all. It's just from what the vendors are saying, it just doesn't seem like the, the uh, shoulder-to-shoulder traffic that they expected. Yeah, usually you can walk, well, not walk around, usually about 1 p.m. That's when the, the traffic really builds up and it's hard to walk around there. I mean, did you kind of account for the same thing? But Yes, on Saturday, I, I, it started out pretty slow, and I would say right after lunch, it started to pick up, and I actually went back to my hotel around three. Just Johnny McLaughlin from Heartbreaking Dawns was flying in, and he was supposed to—he was going to meet me at my hotel at six. So uh, I went back and just kind of took a break. And uh, so at three o'clock, but then so they had a pretty good line at the box office when I was leaving. So it, it probably picked up considerably. So did he have his rock aria last night? <laughs> he tried. <laughs> Uh, he tried. <laughs> yeah, he tried. Um, the general consensus was where he was going to have that karaoke thing uh, was about 25 minutes away from here. The general consensus of the group was they didn't want to drive that far for obvious reasons. It's, you may have heard that this group likes to party some. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they didn't want to drive. And so um, most of them bailed. And that was actually me and Johnny and Terry Spessel from uh, Hotline and Adam from Endorphin Farms, and Jim O'Brien from Crazy Good. We all went to, they went into Dallas and had dinner, and then uh, went to Carrie Bailed Out, but the rest of us went to the karaoke thing. And so uh, Johnny got to sing his song. <laughs> and that's it? One of the best Billy Squire impressions I've ever seen. 
Okay, did he stroke it? No, he didn't stroke it. Uh, <laughs> shoot, I can't. Uh, uh, gosh, the name of the song is on the. Uh, the name of the song is on the tip of my tongue, and I can't think of it. Next time you talk to him, tell him to give you a little sample. We'll do. Well, it, it's a shame it had to be far away from everything. Yeah, it, when it comes to big shows like this, obviously the vendors are tired, but they still want to go to a place, you know, five minutes within the venue. Yeah, I don't blame them. Well, hopefully, the next time Johnny has something like this, it's a little bit closer. Yeah, and then. He he set that up because he's got a friend apparently who uh, does karaoke in uh, in the Dallas area, so he had a connection to get it to get it set up, and so it was just one of those things. You know, we all understood why why nobody wanted to go that far, and this is a long weekend for those guys. Definitely, and they have a long day yeah. ahead today. So uh, besides the tentative interviews with Bumblefoot and K John, you got anything else lined up today? Today is basically my buy day, so I, I hate to buy stuff. I don't, it's not that I haven't bought anything over the last couple of days, but today I really go in there and everything that I've written down that I want to go back and, and buy is that's what I'm doing. And then you know, by right, probably right after I get off the phone with you, I'm going to go in there and I have a few more things to pick up, and then I'm headed back to Temple, ten and a half hour drive home. Very cool. Yeah, I always see the last day as the buy day as well. The first day, Saturday, whenever you get into town, yeah, that's when you go around and try everything and say hi to everybody, and then you kind of make mental notes. Or mm-hmm. Sometimes I will actually go and write stuff down. Well, sounds like it's yeah, that's you know, the way to well, do it. Sounds like it's a good time as always. You know, I miss everyone terribly not going. Yeah, a lot of people have been asking about you. Where's Scott? Where's Buddha? <laughs> <laughs> they say, "Oh, thank God, so you not here." Are, you guys are. <laughs> You guys are definitely missed when you when you're not here. Uh, it's like it's like it's like not having one of your brothers at Christmas or something. That's how it is, <laughs> you know. With any of these shows, you go there and there could be 20 people you know and love, like brothers and sisters, but still those few missing people. Now you, you miss them terribly. So, what do you have planned ahead? Are you going to um, uh, North Market next month? We can't do anything for a while. Uh, Annabelle's daughters are getting ready to have babies, so we're going to be pretty pretty tied up. She's going to be pretty tied up with that, and, and of course, we, we can't get away from work. We just just had the holidays and, and that sort of thing, so we probably won't be able to uh, even look at going to a show, and probably till Pepper's time, if Pepper's happens. We don't know if Pepper's is going to happen this year or not. If it does, then we would love to be there. If it doesn't, then the next one will probably be. I mean, I can't imagine passing up Boston or Houston if we're still in the area down there because it's very close. Uh, and then Nola, of course, I would. I really am looking forward to that. I want to see what Chili Pepper Magazine does with it. I'm looking forward to it as well. Uh, personally, I'm just taking an approach is like one show at a time. I want to go to Albuquerque. After that, I really can't guarantee anything this year. Yeah, you know, you you wish you could go to all of them, but it's it's just impossible when you have other responsibilities in life that get in the way. Exactly. <laughs> Tom, I appreciate you getting on a Skype line with me and uh, giving everyone a little report. Hey, not a problem. I enjoy it, Scott. Well, anyway, have fun the rest of the day, and I hope you have very safe travels. Will do. Thanks a lot. Uh, we'll see you. We'll see you at the next one, or at, before that on Facebook. Oh, uh, definitely. <laughs> all right. I'll talk all to right. you later. See you. See you, buddy. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks again, Tom, for that report. Did a great job. And like I mentioned at the uh, first segment of this podcast, he did uh, some videos for both Scott Roberts Webb and iloveitspicy.com. He got a lot of good highlights from the show. He talked to a number of people, including Bumblefoot of Guns N' Roses. Yes, Ron Thal, nicknamed Bumblefoot, has recently collaborated with K-John. And he talked with him, talked to a lot of other people to show. So don't miss out on those videos. Simply go to iloveitspicy.com and look for the Zest Fest 2013 videos from Firehead Thomas Gately. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and go into a commercial break so you can hear about our sponsors and the other great shows on the Two Guys Talking Network. Now on the other side of them, I'm going to talk to Chef Steve Lawrence of K. John's Fiery Foods. Stick around. Two Guys Talking is proud to be using Pile Thin Microphones inside their podcast studios in St. Charles, Missouri, just outside St. Louis. Thin mics from Pile Sound aren't just providing great audio quality, they're fun. With glistening blue LEDs in each, they are true technological centerpieces and help Two Guys Talking make the mark inside the podcast industry. Are you familiar with Heil microphones? Check out all the details now at HeilSound.com. That's H-E-I-L-Sound.com. 
Talk.com and learn why Two Guys Talking uses and succeeds with the best microphone technology. Heil Sound, laying down the best audio tracks at the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. For a second chance. Having a friendly, relatable voice can mean all the difference in your marketing efforts. Let Scott Roberts voiceover be that voice. I can give you the goods, whatever your need is, whether it be for commercials, podcasts, voicemail phone systems and on hold messages, business presentations, websites, audiobooks, and more. If you require a personable, real, down to earth voiceover artist, then look no further. You can find out more at scottrobertsvoice.com. Are you following the following podcast? There's never been a mission more critical. Join the two guys talking following now by accessing the following podcast.com and become one of the following today. Following podcast.com. The following podcast.com. Hey, Dexter Podcast fans. We've had a ton of feedback about our podcast efforts and wanted to invite you to the newest piece of the Two Guys Talking experience, Two Guys Talking TV. That's right. Now you can watch us live as we record all of our podcasts. It's all available live via the web right now. Get literally under the hood with Two Guys Talking as we edit down podcasts, punch out great custom website work, custom cartooning, and a ton more. It's never been easier to enjoy the creation process and to share and revel with all the cool behind-the-scenes fun with Two Guys Talking TV. Check it out now at twoguystalking.com forward slash TV. We look forward to interacting with you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon via Two Guys Talking TV. You consider yourself to be a Shelly Head and want to find some hot new gear to wear? Oh, yeah. Look no further than ChiliHeadCheese.com. If you're a heat freak and love hot sauce, chili peppers, or anything dealing with fiery and spicy foods, this is the place to get t-shirts to show off your obsession. Chili Head Cheese is dedicated to giving you the hottest t-shirts, mouth pads, mugs, aprons, and more for the discriminating Chili Head. Go to ChiliHeadCheese.com. That's C-H-I-L-E-H-E-A-D-S-T-E-E-S.com. And we are back. And now here's my interview with right-hand man and general manager of K. John's Fiery Foods, Steve Lawrence. Enjoy. Good afternoon, Chef Steve. How are you doing today? Good. How about you? Oh, can't complain, really. One of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you was uh, Buddha and I were talking earlier. Your name was just kind of batted around and... The fact that K. John and Sue are currently down in Zestfest right now, mm-hmm. but we know that you, in some measure, have a lot to do with K. John's success. So, so I really wanted to get behind the scenes, find out exactly what you do for K. John's, uh, plus you know get a little bit of your background about your food preferences, flavor preferences, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So, I, I will start out by asking you, what is your culinary background? Well, I was in the restaurant business for about 20 years. I actually started when I was 16 years old. Um, It's kind of a fortunate position. I started out as a dishwasher and busboy at a very upscale retirement center. And there was a chef there, and uh, I worked there about maybe six months, and they offered me a position to cook. So I thought, sure, that's a lot better. And a lot of the other employees were a little jealous because you don't always get, you know, that job offer that soon to uh, move from that position to a cook. There are a lot of cooks that stayed there for years and years. So they knew I I liked food and I enjoyed cooking. So I was pretty uh, fortunate at that point to to start cooking there and work under their chef. And I was there for about seven years working under him. That's really where I got my start cooking. I used to be a real picky eater growing up. There's a lot of stuff I wouldn't eat, and it was uh, my love for food kind of started coming around. I should say the variance in the foods that I eat started coming around when I started cooking because, you know, you make something, you have to taste it. Mm -hmm. Obviously. And all these foods I wouldn't eat, I'd taste. I was like, hey, this isn't so bad. So it really opened up my eyes to a lot of the food up there. 
And uh, after that, I kind of made my way through a lot of corporate chain style restaurants and uh, held various management positions and did some cooking. And it just always kind of remained a passion for me to to cook. It was what I always kind of gravitated to. So uh, I eventually got an opportunity to open my own restaurant, did that. I had my place for about four years and finally sold the restaurant. I came to work at K. John's through actually owning my restaurant. Uh, John and uh, Sue were actually regulars at my place. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine that I'd known for years and years actually worked for John uh, when he had his fire protection business. And uh, he goes, hey, my buddy owns this restaurant. Why don't you come in and check it out? We'll have some lunch there. And so he and John came in for lunch. And John liked it enough that he brought Sue back that night for dinner. So but they were regulars probably from about the first few months I opened the place on. And uh, when I was uh, getting, I guess, somewhat burned out from all the hours, I was married, had a baby on the way, and the restaurant hours were just crushing me. My partner had, had left, so I was doing all the work. And John just said, hey, if you, you know, you sold your place, why don't you come work for me? So and that's how I ended up at K. John's. Oh, interesting. It was amazing that you had time to sleep during all that. <laughs> <laughs> there was not a lot of sleep when I had my restaurant, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then having a baby and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yep. And, and then, well, how many years ago was it that you started to work for K. John's? Uh, it was about seven and a half years ago that I started with them, so... It just kind of stuck. I've been here a while. Um, nice thing about it is the restaurant business was great. I really enjoyed it, but it was a grind. I knew it'd be a grind on my family. And the uh, nice thing about this is it's more regular hours, um, and I still get to play with food. So it just it seemed like something that was intriguing. And so I've been here seven and a half years. I love it. It's it's a place to get to really play with food and. You know, it's it's just not a grind. It's it's a fun job. That's I think what everybody out there is looking for is something they love, and it sounds like a dream job to me. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. I'd love to play with food all day. A lot of people tell me that. Uh, well, of course, everyone in the fiery foods community knows K. John. You know, of course, K. John's fiery foods. It's America's winningest, most awarded hot sauce manufacturer. And, and we know that John himself is a flavor genius, you know, Absolutely. coming up with all kinds of products. And I, I don't think anything, well, except for that one little elusive product, uh, John knows what I'm talking about <laughs> that I didn't care for, but virtually everything else he makes is above average. But since you've been working with him for seven and a half years, what kind of input have you had towards creating new recipes? Well, I'll tell you what, a lot of the recipes that we have were here when I got here. Um, a lot have been developed since then. One of the problems we have here is is we like to play in the kitchen and experiment with new stuff. And, and John will tell you this too. What we've done is we kind of just play around and we throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. And I guess unfortunately or fortunately, a lot of it stuck, almost too much. So <laughs> we're actually trying to scale back our offerings. We we make, you know, between the co-packing, private labeling, our products, you know, we're, we're 150 different products that we probably make. So, um, but I, I've been in on the development, a lot of them. It's kind of fun because I, I kind of consider myself John's right hand man and you know he's he's got a business to run and he lets me kind of take care of the kitchen and everything else and you know I'm really kind of the the QC person and development and together we've come up with some nice products and I think we work real well together that way we kind of have a lot of the same tastes as far as uh, you know foods things like that he eats vastly hotter than I do I'm the self-proclaimed company wimp, so <laughs> when uh, when we're working on something, I tend to develop stuff that's a little more mild and mainstream. So. No, no, don't disappoint me. <laughs> I was going to ask you what your heat tolerance was. I mean, it would have to be extraordinary to even just taste and try out stuff that K. John's makes. I'm kind of weird that way because I'm really, like, my favorite chili is a Serrano. I, I like them. They're just a good, consistent chili. Mm -hmm. I like the flavor of them. Um, you start getting up into the hobs. I, I do like hobs used a certain way. I, I can't eat just straight hob marrow sauces like purees. I can eat them, but they're a little warmer than I typically like. So, you know, I, I get more towards a Serrano, but I also have an unusual ability to uh, – kind of go towards extracts. Really? I don't like them. 
but I can taste them. Yeah, a lot of times we'll taste the extracts when we get them in, and people always look at me because they know I'll try them. I don't know if it's I like the pain or it, it's excruciating. They taste terrible. But so the company Wimp is the one that can actually taste a lot of the extract sauces. And, now, they kill me. Don't get me wrong, but... Mm-hmm. I do have that ability. <laughs> to, I guess, take the taste, that would have to be a uh, a very special talent. I know I don't personally anymore. I don't like to eat extract sauces, yeah. especially when some of the hotter sauces, the ghost pepper, oh, Trinidad no, yeah. scorpion, those are all almost as hot as extract. Oh, you yeah. really don't need them anymore. Yeah, when I started at K. John's to get that heat level, we used to have to use extracts. You know, the hottest chili out there at the time was the was the Red Savina. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you're looking at, you know, half a million Scoville units, and now you've got, you know, you wanted to get up to a million, you had to had to use extracts, and you've got chilies that are, that are hitting that now. So it's pretty amazing how things have come along. Definitely. And I'd rather certainly have the, the ultra-hot chilies in an extract any day. Well, not only that, some of them actually taste good. I'm a big fan of the Buchalokias. Oh, yeah. Do you appreciate the flavor of the chilies themselves, even though you might not love or, or be able to take the heat from the Super Hots? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think the Buchalokia is one of the best-tasting chilies out there. I really like them when they're dried. You know, we get a man in there when they're just freshly dried and you open up a box or a bag of them and they just have that kind of citrusy, it's almost like pineapple, little grapefruit. Um, they kind of take on their own little, you know, it depends how they're dried, I guess, but they have a little smokiness to them. And I really like the complexity of the flavor of them. There's the Trinidad. You know, I'll tell you, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I like the, the fact that it's so hot and it's popular and it's it's a really fun chili. But flavor-wise, I'd take the, the Jalokia any day over that. I think it's just a more complex chili. It's not quite the sledgehammer effect, at least for me anyways, that the Trinidad Scorpion has. Oh, I'm totally in the same boat as you. The Scorpion? To me, it's just a little too bitter, too floral tasting. Yep. And yep. And obviously, I'm not a sauce maker. You know, I'm not in the kitchen day in and day out trying to find out what ingredients go good with scorpions. But I, I think I should ask you: Is it a little bit harder to develop scorpion sauces to make them taste better? To I guess to bring down some of that bitterness and to bring out different aspects of the flavor. Uh, I don't know if it's more difficult. There's always somebody that likes that chili. You know, more than the boot jello kia, those people are out there. They like that flavor profile, so we kind of just go with what it is. But we do probably, I would say if we're developing a sauce with the Trinidad, there's probably some more spices or seasonings that we would put in it to kind of bring the, the actual flavor out and tone down just that real pungency it has. Where I, I kind of, I really like the, the boot jello kia because you can do so much with it and just let it stand on its own. Yeah. Um, well, let me ask you about some of the product lines that have developed throughout the past several years since you've been there. There has been the 10 sauce line with the boots and the Trinidad mm-hmm. percentage wise. Yep. How much input have you had towards the development of the products personally as opposed <laughs> to John's input? Yeah, there have been some out there. Most of the 10 line was kind of done by John. Again, there, there's a lot of collaboration between us. Uh, you know, 10 hot sauce, that was 100% John. Um, I actually did the 10 wing sauce that we had. Um, I remember we, when I made that, I think we were doing a show at the fair, and John wasn't here. And uh, so I made some up, and we wanted to send some down to the fairground. So we sent some down, and he tried it. He was, wow, that is just blazing hot. And he goes, I don't want to say it's too hot because it's a 10 product, but it's really hot. And I, you know, I naturally agreed with him. I think the flavor's really good on it. And it's, you know, it's gone on to win some awards. And so it's it's fun when I get to, to play with the ultra hots, me being the kind of the wimp. And I, you know, I can make something that, that scores well and that people really like. So, yeah, you know, probably percentage wise, it's it's hard to nail down. I would say John does, does the majority of them for, for sure. Um, I've actually gotten into kind of developing some stuff really more here recently. We've got, uh, you know, the Cara Cara sauce that we have now. Um, that was one I kind of developed, and that's based off a couple other hot sauces that we've already had, two of my favorites, actually. And uh, so I ended up kind of blending two sauces. And that's a Serrano lime and the Oaxacan, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I was going to ask you about yep, that. Yep, Exactly. Yeah, and it's kind of my wheelhouse heat heat wise too. It could actually be a little bit hotter for me, so you know maybe down the road we'll have a hotter version of that. That would be interesting. Yeah, John had given me a bottle of that this past year, and yeah, it was really interesting. 
no, no, it wasn't John. It was Sue that sent me a bottle. Interesting. Yeah. No, <laughs> and she okay. didn't even tell me what it was. And it's like, wait, wait a minute. This tastes like Oaxacan, but it, there's this kind of sweet lime flavor to it. Could it be the Serrano lime yep. mixed in? Yep. It's like, she said, yep, that's what it was. You got to hit the nail on the head. Yeah. What about some of the other hotter ones, including the, uh, go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong in pronouncing this, the Quetzalcoatl? Quetzalcoatl. Yep. Quetzal, Quetzalcoatl. Yep. Um, that one was John. He's wanted to do that one for a while. You know, it, it's a, it's essentially, you know, it's I wouldn't call it a, an ultra hot. It's it's Louisiana style for the most part, but a very, very hot one. Kind of fits in with our, you know, kind of our southwestern line labels that we now, I think our labels are getting better and better every year. John's got a real good focus on what he wants the product lines to look like. And that's a new one he did, uh, and I really like it a lot. It's actually one of the hotter sauces that I use on a regular basis. So mm-hmm. it's uh, I probably use that, you know, we eat lunch around here a lot, and it's kind of nice not having to worry about if we have hot sauce laying around. That's probably <laughs> the one I use the most right now. Oh, it's an amazing sauce. I, I love it. Total five-star product for me. Yeah, it's got nice depth of flavor, and it, it's hot, so I think it's a good kind of – it's kind of a bridge hot sauce for somebody that's maybe doing one of our, you know, medium heat hot sauces, wants to move up a little bit. I think it's a good sauce for that. Now, what about some of the recent barbecue sauces and salsas? How much input did you have into making those? I'll tell you what, a lot of the barbecues, um, those were John's. I want to do an alcohol-infused line. Naturally, you know, I have input on those as, you know, you know, let's start making them. And, you know, we do test batches and, you know, what do you think? I think this is good. I could use more of this, more of that. Uh, we've been working on some some other ones that we'd like to bring out, and I'm kind of pushing for those and trying to develop some of those. I actually developed an alcohol-infused barbecue for a guy called Brimstone, a former professional wrestler, and now he does comic books. Um, so I worked on a whole line of products for him and uh, Bumblefoot, Ron Thal, from the guitars for Guns N' Roses. So mm-hmm. over about a three-day period, I ended up developing about 17 sauces or products for them. Most of them were sauces. I think there were five spice blends in there. So that was a lot of fun. I got to do all of that. I think John developed a couple of the sauces in there, but it was kind of a crash course in, in product development, really, for, for them. I don't think they realized you know, what went into it, but it was uh, it was a lot of fun. So we got a, you know, a cherry barbecue in there with uh, bourbon, and we've got a ras- another raspberry barbecue in there. Um, they did a grilling sauce that's kind of a teriyaki pineapple. You know, you'd use it like a barbecue sauce, and I developed that for them. So a lot of, a lot of neat products for them that we just did. Very cool. To kind of let people see behind the curtain, like what a typical day for you at K. John's Fiery Food is. When it comes to co-packing for other people, when it comes to creating new products, when it comes to fulfilling orders, how much goes into each task there? Well, you know, typical day, we're starting to do a lot more co-packing, which we'll probably have to start cutting back on. <laughs> so we're just, we've been very fortunate to have a great year last year. Um, this year is shaping up to be a good year, so there's only so much production we can get out of our plant before we have to add other shifts or, or automate more, so we're going to have to slow down on that. So right now, a lot of my time is spent with Copac clients. Uh, a lot of the people we are startups. They're, they're mom and pops. They've had these recipes for a while, and you know they, they have their own salsa or hot sauce they've been making at home for years, and they want to sell it. So that takes a lot of time. Because uh, they come to us and they have no idea about you know what they need for labeling requirements, how to manufacture it. If it's something the way they make it at home can even be manufactured on a larger scale. So we, I end up doing a lot of consulting work on Copac right now. So that's a a good portion of my days. You know, so usually that's the first thing I do when I get here in the morning is I go over my calendar first thing to make sure that you know. I've got everything I need for Copac clients coming in. If we're getting ready for production, then I've got to make sure that, you know, the specific jar they use and all the ingredients that they would use in their sauce are here, and, and we can get it knocked out for them. So that's kind of my first planning task of the day. And uh, then the rest of it's just kind of, you know, ordering for us, making sure that we've got our inventories where they need to be and, 
you know, our raw materials are where they need to be so we can keep producing. And so I do a lot of that. You know, on top of being the chef, I'm the general manager here. So we all wear a lot of hats. We're a small company with nine employees. So a lot of our employees have been here for a long time. So it's it's one of those things where we've gotten used to doing a lot of jobs and just working together to get stuff done. Exactly, yeah. Because John and Sue are in Texas right now, you won't be able to get in trouble if I ask you this and you answer it. Uh, anything new coming from K. John's? Any little hints? Maybe anything that you you know shouldn't mention? And, and believe me, this will be just between me and you. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you, there are a few things. Um, it's hard to really say what they are because we're we're kind of always playing. We've got a list of uh, products we we want to see come to come to market and get produced here. So, and I would say anything that's coming out anytime soon, we're kind of working on our our lower heat level and and mid range heat level a little bit. Uh, right now, I don't see any of the the new ultra hots or anything like that coming out. Uh, maybe later in the year, but in the near future, we've got a couple grilling sauces and spice blends that we're looking at uh, looking at trying to get into production. Well, we can't wait to see what they are. But of course, you know, it's always yeah. you know one of the good aspects of going to you know hot sauce shows and food shows and all that is just trying all the new products. <laughs> K yep. John's never disappoints. Yep. There's Seems like there's always something new, always something interesting. So I, I look forward to trying them. Yep, John. John is definitely an innovator, and you know he he just absolutely loves what he does, and he is one of the most knowledgeable people in the country on these things. And uh, you know it, it really helps us put out great products. Uh, it's one of the reasons I I stay with this company is John is all about the quality of his products and his name being on them. So. Uh, like I said before, I did a lot of corporate restaurant work, and what I always saw was over time, you know, corporate restaurants tend to kind of go downhill in the quality. They're always looking for a way to make a, a quick buck, and uh, that always bothered me because we have a real good product, and over time, the same customers would come in and be like, you know, this just isn't isn't what it used to be. It's just not as good, and then you'd stop seeing those people, and that was frustrating. So it's nice to be somewhere where John and Sue are just absolutely about the quality. You don't have to worry if I do develop something. You know, is it is it too expensive? Is it something we can do? You know, on a shoestring budget, you don't have to worry about that. If it's a good product, you know, we're going to ask the right price for it and just make sure it's top quality. That's that's uh, nice to be able to do that, have that freedom. Mm-hmm. Well, excellent. Do you see yourself moving on to something else another 10, 20 years? Uh, well, it's hard to say what, what there's going to be 10 to 20 years. I can tell you, I, I really like what I'm doing now. Um, I can't see myself in another business. I, I've been in food my whole life. On what oh boy, you know, 26 years. Uh, you know, I like to eat, <laughs> and I like cooking. So I, I don't see me jumping ship doing something else. It, it uh, we'll just see where the road takes me from here. But it, I feel like I've I've gained enough knowledge, enough training here. Whatever I do, the the, the path will be very similar to what I'm doing now. Well, anyway, I won't keep you much longer, Steve. I appreciate you letting me talk to you today. My pleasure. I will probably yeah see you next month during the North Market Festival there in Columbus. Yeah, it's going to be hopefully great Hopefully, I can make the open house. It just depends on what time of day I'm coming in. But, yeah, hopefully I could probably get the last hour or two of the open house. Sure. It's, it's always good to see the facilities yeah. there. Well, we appreciate everybody coming into the open house. It's always a good time, and and we're looking forward to to North Market. It, it's a fun show because it's uh, it's here, it's in town, it's you know it's our backyard, and we love uh, we love having everybody in and kind of hosting that event. It's always something to look forward to. Well, that and Zest Fest Midwest too coming up in June. Absolutely, yep, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a great event, and we're we're really excited about that. Again, having it right here in our backyard, and it's it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a big learning experience, I'm sure for for everybody, and uh, it's gonna open a lot of eyes to to people here in Columbus and Ohio and elsewhere. You know about chilies in Ohio. It still blows people's minds that you know we make hot sauce here in Columbus. <laughs> so I think it'll, it'll be nice having it here. Well, the the uh, weekend of fire show has been going on for I think six years now down in Cincinnati. Yeah, I, I think it's you yeah. know opening up people's eyes that you know yeah. it, it's not just a Southwest or Texas thing or Louisiana thing. Us people in the Midwest, we love spicy foods as well. Exactly. Yep. Yep.
it's it's over the world dude it's uh you know growing up i didn't know there were really spicy foods other than tabasco and it's it's nice to see you know more flavorful more exciting foods out there so i think everybody else kind of feels that way k john's is definitely you know one of the major players one of the quality players out there no we try (laughs) yeah (laughs) well thank you for speaking with me and uh, i look forward to seeing you next month it sounds great scott thanks so much okay bye-bye Big thanks to Steve for taking time out of his busy schedule to talk about all things K. John's. And don't forget, I spoke to K. John Hart himself back in episode one, the very first episode of the Weekly Firecast. So if you're a fan of K. John's, be sure to go back, uh, look in your iTunes feed, download episode one, take a listen to that. It's an extended, it's a great interview with K. John, by the way. He never disappoints. Download that via iTunes or just simply go to weeklyfirecast.com. And go all the way back to episode one of the audio version of the Weekly Firecast. And again, if you wanted to know about the various events that were talked about in this episode, don't forget you can look at my Chili Head events calendar, learn about hot sauce and foodie shows. And that extensive database is available for viewing at scottrobertsweb.com slash calendar. Or you can just click the link in the show notes. And all the major links that are talked about in each and every episode of the Weekly Firecast are put in the show notes for your convenience. That way, if you're working out at the gym right now, if you're listening in your car, you don't have to worry about trying to remember all these various links up in the old noggin there. You can just go back for that particular episode, and this case is episode 23 of the Weekly Firecast, and click later when it's more convenient for you. Now I'm going to name all the Facebook sharers and Twitter retweeters. Okay, try saying that three times real fast. Now here's the thing, if you're unfamiliar with it, this is how it goes. If you shared a link, anytime I make a post on Facebook, either through my personal account, through scottrobertsweb.com, and any of the various uh, Facebook groups, if there's a new episode of the Weekly Firecast, if you share that on Facebook, I will mention your name and your company's name in the very next episode. The same, the same goes with Twitter. Anytime I tweet a new link to the latest episode of the Weekly Firecast, if you retweet it to your followers, I will mention your Twitter handle. Obviously, it's a way for you know word to spread about this podcast, but it's also a cool way to get you or your company's name mentioned. A little bit of free advertising, and it's not too bad, is it? But anyway, these are the people who shared the link for episode 22. On Facebook, there is Mike Eisenberg of Wicked Cactus Sauces. Thank you very much, Mike. You can find out about Wicked Cactus at wickedcactussauce.com. Great manufacturer of products, too. There was, of course, Firehead Thomas Gately, who I talked to earlier in this episode. Thanks, Tom. There was Jim Duffy at refiningfirechilies.com. He sells chili pepper plants and seeds. And his website is refiningfirechilies.com. Also sharing on Facebook, There was Zach Leaf. There was also Steve Chambers. So thank you very much, gentlemen, for that. And on Twitter, retweeting the link for episode 22, there was The Spice Boys. And their Twitter handle is at The Spice Boys. There was Hot Sauce of the Month Shop. Their Twitter handle is at Hot Sauce OTM Shop. So another big thanks goes to those fine folks for helping to promote this podcast. And again, I welcome you to do it, not just through social media, but just let people know about this podcast. If you know any uh, gargantuan fans of Fiery Foods, people who love the hottest hot sauces and they're heat freaks and they love to eat chili peppers and they love to grill and cook barbecue, let them know about it. You know, if it wasn't for people like you, this uh, podcast wouldn't be as successful as it is right now. So it's all thanks to a grassroots community effort from kind souls like you. Thank you very much for everyone who's done everything to help promote the show. I appreciate it. And I also invite everyone to give input on the weekly Firecast. Are there things that you like about it or don't like? Any guests or topics that you want mentioned? I want to know about it. And it's very easy to give me feedback. Simply go to the number 2guystalking.com slash Firecast, or just click the link in the show notes. Go to the simple web form. Right now, it's on the left-hand side of the page. Fill out your name, email, your feedback, and very simple. 
So don't be shy. Let me know what's on your mind about the podcast today. So that's it. No more stuff to talk about this episode. I want to say God bless you, everybody. And remember, until next time, keep it burning. This has been the Weekly Firecast. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast via iTunes or at the official website at scottrobertsweb.com slash weeklyfirecast. The Weekly Firecast is part of the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. For more information on other great Two Guys Talking programming, you can go to twoguystalking.com. That's the number two, guystalking.com. Thanks for listening. And remember, keep it burning.